Welcome to the show, man. Thank you, sir. Domingo Tresero, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, never knew he sang. Never. I mean, I've known you a long time, bro. How long have we known each other, uh, bro? It's been a uh, while. Couple, 12, 12, 12, 10, 12 years yeah. when I first started seeing you and talking to you. Yeah. Uh, sí, señor. Pero sí. Este, y de repente te dieron las ganas de grabar música o qué No, es pues que mira, las canciones es, uh, que yo estoy cantando las he escrito desde tiempo atrás. Por ejemplo, la, la de Nada es igual que la escribí mi papá, la escribí en el 2010. Uh -huh. um, in 2010 and, uh, and pues mi my primary work era contracting, right? Siempre uh -huh. me iba a Iraq o Afganistán a trabajar, um, working for the US government, so I never had the time to Focus or think I want to be a singer because I was estaba trabajando bien y me pagaba yeah. bien y it was my mind was over there right that type sí. of work but yeah when you're settled down a little more you have issues that kind of start creeping in your head especially as a veteran or a contractor see sí. and I needed to find an out something to channel my my emotions PTSD is the word I'm or your creative juices too bro I mean this is creative stuff bro yeah. making videos and sí, shit sí. y la música pero te digo porque empecé a cantar te quiero contestar the reason I decided is, is to it, it helps a lot with yeah because you're focusing on that and you're not focusing on the other stuff uh, yes sir and not only that I, I have passion bro like it gives me something like when I when I'm at the studio with uh, cuando voy al estudio grabar bro like I'm happy uh, full of passion energy and excitement That I only got when I was overseas, really. Yeah, so yeah. it, it kind of helps everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the excitement of the unknown of what can happen with the music and si, all that si va stuff. Pegar, I don't know, but if it's especially your own original work, pues con más pasión. Like you, si. You're singing your own way because that's the way it te gusta. Yeah. Oye, Daddy, ¿y qué has hecho, bro? Besides the music, I mean, I, I've seen uh, the one of the last times I saw you, you were... Uh, You were um, one of the security guards for Alex Jones, dude, from Alex Infowars. So, that was in 2020 when all that uh, January 6th stuff happened. Yeah, I, I was over there. Yeah, you were there, bro. I remember seeing pictures of you on a rooftop with a yeah. bunch of guys and, and Alex Jones. And then that whole January 6th uh, deal is uh, you know happened. And, and you were there in the middle of everything. So, exactly. So, I had a uh, firsthand eyewitness of everything, uh, Rock, believe it or not. And uh, when I see all this... BS, conspiracy, negative, all misleading information, misinformation. Yeah. At, at, during that time, I would, f I guess, verbally com uh, with a computer fight and argue with every single person that was BSing or leading the people in the wrong way because I was there. I saw exactly what happened. Yeah. And um, and what exactly did happen, bro? Look, so like you mentioned, well, the client was uh, Mr. Jones. We went just to do protection for him. He was, uh, You know, we went to, he had his own thing that he had to do, but we happened to see how everybody else was acting. And at one point, one of our, uh, Mr. Jones himself got on the uh, horn and started talking to the crowd. Hey, we're not going to be like Antifa or BLM. You know, he was saying, we're, that's not what we, the people are, the Republicans uh, or, or the conservative people. I saw that video. We're, we're not like them. We all need to stay calm. And we were calm. I, I honestly believe, and again, Ay, se oye como conspiracy, pero tenían embedded uh, liberals and BLM people dressed like conservatives. And they they sparked the, todo, todo pescó con un grupito de gente. Mm -hmm. Y pues, you know, once you have a lot of emotions and you have thousands and thousands of people, it carries over. Yeah. So that little group was not part of the... They were they were hired agitators. A, a, that's the word. Yeah, that's what they're called. They were, they were bust in, and uh, they were literally bust in. And even the people that don't think that could happen are just thinking stupid yeah, because it doesn't take much to get some people involved from the inside to go into a crowd and disrupt the whole event while the crowd and the majority of the people in the crowd are protesting peacefully, and they'll go in there to destroy stuff, to d destroy... That particular movement, the movement, yeah. and, and to because well, I mean it tarnished everything per se, right? They wanted to even trying to impeach Trump over him supposedly sparking this, mm -hmm. when we all know that he said it protest peacefully and lawfully, right? Mm -hmm. He called him over there to yeah go exercise and protest, but do it peacefully and lawfully. Yeah, I think the the word the exact words he used. That's what saved him. Right. I mean, if he hadn't said that, he'd be in a little more, you know, trouble, I would imagine. But no, he was smart enough to say that. And and obviously, he didn't want that to happen, bro. Come on. Y yo veo los comentarios, uh, the people, the way the liberals tell you stuff on her, and they come at me too sometimes. Pero que esto y que el otro, I mean, if we, it also came out que esta, ¿cómo se llama? 
la, la viejita. Uh, Pelosi. Pelosi turned down, bringing in the National There's Guard. There's video help of it. Ahead of time. Yeah. So when you're expecting a big movement, you security-wise, you you have your Capitol Police, which we knew were going to be outnumbered. We have Then you have to bring the National Guard to uh, augment that security force, and she turned it down. Why? She wanted this to have happened and, and to happen. Either that or she's just incompetent. You know, I mean, it could be incompetence as well, but it's hard to say that she's incompetent when, you know, she runs the whole show, bro. I don't want to be more, talk too much about politics, but está igual que Biden. Se le olviden las cosas. Well, I mean, they're in their mid 80s and stuff. Yeah, esa gente debe de descansar. Well, I mean, it's fine for an older person to be in charge of whatever, but as long as they're cognizant, not everybody's the same. I mean, if Biden was in all his men mental, you know, acuity yeah. and everything, I mean, I'd be okay with him. I mean, you know what I mean? Even though he's been incompetent, but I think what happened with him is that he, people took advantage of his disability and were able to do things uh, that, you know, otherwise he wouldn't approve of, man. I agree. I don't know, man. That's just my, no, no, my no, theory. I, I, you know? I agree with you, man. Um, look, you and I have a lot of the same beliefs when it comes to this, the political spectrum right now and, and what's going on. And we want just what's best for our country, for our community, and for us. I mean, nosotros somos... Del Valle, somos Latinos, somos Hispanos, no somos racistas because we go for uh, whoever, Trump or whatever. We want what's going to be more, uh, keep us a little bit more money in our pocket. Mm -hmm. These last four years, let's be real, it, it wasn't like that, right? Uh, gas went up, gacho. I mean, they were blaming it on the war in Ukraine. Yeah, they had a little bit to do with it, but they stopped uh, the, all the fracking and all the oil. We were the number one oil producer when Trump was here, man. You know, you understand? We mm -hmm. were de de independent when it comes to that. Uh, el, el, la comida, bro. Mi, mi señora y yo vamos a, a la comida. We go by groceries, brother, man. We don't get food stamps. We don't get no. We don't get no assistance ni nada. We, I've never have. I've never been able to qualify. So when I go every week or every two weeks, depending on what I'm buying, hundred fifty, two hundred dollars is you know tres bolsitas de pinche groceries que we're carrying. I know, bro. It's That's, shocking. Uh, I mean, and I don't think about myself because you know people will say on my Facebook like, hey, de qué estás quejando, Rax? Si tú puedes hacerlo y puedes comprarlo. I got you know how much I work. I work yeah, triple. And then when I'm there paying and I'm getting my 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 receipt. I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about people los that have no kids, pueden. dude. Los, y los que no pueden. And some people don't think that way, bro. I mean, th th look, look, man. You're right. We might be in a okay, decent situation where, yeah, it hurts. It still hurts us. But we're able to still provide. And it's not that comfortably. Imagínate la gente. Because the poverty rate here in the Valley está cabrón. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. We're one of the more poor areas in the state of Texas, uh, just in general. So if it hurts us, imagine the majority of the other people here. Uh, les, les duele, está cabrón para, para vivir in these circumstances, mm -hmm. right? Um, so when people say, pues, we're going to stick with Kamala and continue with the same type of, of living that we've had because she's a woman. Like, bro, I'm all for woman. You know what? If Ms. Uh, Condoleezza Rice was a candidate, I would have voted for her immediately. Condoleezza Rice was the Secretary of State under Bush. I met the lady. When I worked in Iraq and Afghanistan, that lady or Tulsi Gabbard, Tulsi Gabbard, the man. I would I mean, vote for her. We want people that are competent people to do. Um, I, I try to ask people on online. Well, give me one significant accomplishment this lady has done, and no one can tell me anything. And all they do is complain about Trump uh, being rude, racist, lamada. But you got to focus on his policies and how better of a living it was during that time. We need to focus on the bigger picture, right? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the dumb things he says. How much better were you living under his administration? How much more money was still going back to your pocket? You know, uh, how much more was gas taking you and you still had money back? That's what's more important because that's your way of life every day, man. Mm -hmm. Yes, look, vamos a seguir sufriendo, unfortunately, if, if Kamala were to win. Uh, well, you know, the border, dude. I mean, I just, a, just the border alone is, is a reason enough to fire somebody you know and my orcas are still there after that whole disaster I mean, um and i just with that alone i think is is justification to fire people and reelect somebody else to try to get it fixed because when trump was uh president in 2019 there was an article that came out uh with cbs and uh, it was about some Chicago priests that had come to the respite center here uh -huh. in McAllen. Right. And it, the title was Chicago uh, Priest Visit Respite Center in McAllen. 
and find immigrants scarce due to the change in policy. You could, well, so that means we're doing something. That, that was 2019. <laughs> and in 2020, what happened after that when Trump was put out? Now, that right there, people, and the news is never going to report uh, it, right? I won't, I won't say the lady's name here, the one, the, uh, the, 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 la, la. I won't say, don't say her name. I won't say her name, but the one that, that runs the the, the, the respite centers here. Oh, see, la, 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 la nun. That's a señora. She made money. No matter what you want to say, they make money off of this. Uh, uh, you, uh, look, I'm going to tell you firsthand, the man, about those things because my my client at the time, when I worked part of that that detail, we would go hit these locations, uh, and there would be veterans and homeless Americans that were kicked out of these places. Those centers are for everybody, mm -hmm. anybody that's in need, homeless, and needs food. They they were they were out there complaining and they would tell us we're American. They spoke perfect English. Uh, some veterans, some homeless Americans. They kicked them out to make room for illegal aliens. I'm gonna say illegal aliens. I don't say illegal immigrants. If I'm sorry if I'm not polit politically correct like that. I mean, shouldn't you be taking care of our own that are in the streets first? Los, they kicked them out and then they try to question the the staff. Well, and some were just saying, well, they were drug use, que este, que el otro, whatever. I mean, in those centers, there's m molesting of kids, man. It's known, and nobody seems to care. Mm -mm. We were in an alley behind the the, the Catholic center, the, the respite center. Is it respite? Or respite. Respite center, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. But, um, and this car showed up, and they were about to throw three kids in the back. And they weren't even fastened. They were just standing, and they just hauled butt. They were just taking them out through the back. I understand maybe they were moved, but... Uh, do they even check who they're handing the kids over to, bro? The human trafficking has been out of this world, dude. It's. I think they lost over 300,000 children during this administration. They don't know where these kids are at. Those. That's 330-some thousand kids. 300, 300 not 10,000. They don't know where they, they are. You know, it's, it's just been totally disastrous. And um, I don't know who would even think that it's a good thing enough to keep the leadership that we have that let that happen it's just it's just mind-boggling and then the news i mean they're hoax after hoax after hoax yeah, you're right i mean they said that um trump said there would be bloodshed among americans if he if he didn't win and he war. meant the econ economy uh they said that he wants Ch Liz Cheney executed. You l you, you hear, look at did that. You, did you hear the whole bit that yeah, he was saying? He was saying she's a war hawk. No, no, but no. And, and and if they, she'd be in a position of being at war, she wouldn't want to do it. Correct. Uh, so that was a whole bit. And and then the other one, uh, there was a, another one as well, but about uh, shooting journalists and you know. But these uh, news because I've been in the news. Gonna, they don't have nothing really to talk negative about trump policies aren't bad enough they just find yeah. the little dumb things that he says he boom they but you know what freaks me out dude is that i know smart people that are running with it and i don't understand why they do that if they're smart enough i mean all it takes is for you to see what the news is telling you then go on over and see the entire piece of the freaking speech and then decide who's lying. Like, I you mean, know, I mean, it's that simple. I think for me, when you're using the word smart or these intelligent people that, that we know, because I know them too, and they still will stuck in with the party and the candidate. And they believe I the I, hoaxes. I, 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 I doubt they believe them, Rock. I think they're just more loyal to the party than the country and the way of life. They're being willfully ignorant. Yes. They know what the beep is going on, brother. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think they just more like it, it's it sucks because here in the valley también los demócratas que somos conservative in other in other words just moderates by, we're I mean we're conservatives bro Democrats are conservatives not even moderates bro everything that Trump stands for that's what they are here in the valley that's what we are but they're totally disregarding that and they're still focusing on being loyal to the party mm -hmm. they're more about the power in the party instead of knowing that Trump is what they believe in. And they have to do that because Pelosi will hold funds from them if they run for re-election. No, no, we'll see. You know, she controls, you know, most of the money that goes out to the campaigns. Uh, I, As a matter of fact, I think there's a few Democrats that are running here in the Rio Grande Valley that are really low on cash because they're not being helped. Uh, and uh, one of them was talking about, you know, keeping the border strong or building a, up yeah. the border. And I was like, what? 
Last time you ran, you were saying you didn't, you know, you believed in, you know, open borders and all that. Now you're not. So next thing you know is she's running low on money because Pelosi's not dishing it out, I'm imagining. But, uh, uh, you know, what, man, politics, um, you know, now that I've gone older and, and uh, understand the way it works, it's like a freaking mafia, bro. Gotcha, bro. <laughs> it it is, dude. Ya cuando entiendes en verdad the way politics is over here, talking about in D.C. and the way... Th- I mean, um, what do you call the people that give the money? The the lobbyists. Uh-huh. They're the ones really that that have the power. They they're just the puppets. They strong arm them on what they want, or they're not going to get. So you, that, I not, just saw RFK Jr. and he said what he loved about Trump was that um, the transitioning team. Yeah. If he wins, his transition team is him. Uh, you know, Trump's transition team is RFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbard, and that there aren't any lobbyists and the government isn't funding. It's all being funded by, you know. And, and I think that's what scares the, the, the Democrat powerhouse of D.C., that it's going to it's gonna like go like that that greed. It's greed that they've continued to had. Se le va a ir el, 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 cow, el cow cash, ¿cómo dice? Mm-hmm. Cash cow. The cash cow ain't going to be there for them no more. Or, or it's going to slowly start depleting because esas mamadas se van, a, se van a parar, bro. They hold the keys to trillions of tax dollars, bro. And then, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, but we'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> yo, yo vine para la música yeah. and we got so... No, look, well, man, hey, I'm very passionate. People, people got to know where you come from, you know? Not, I'm... I'm very passionate about politics, bro. Um, and and I guess let's go. Well, you're there. a veteran. You should be. Uh, I will. And and let me bring it uh, down on us to uh, local politics. Uh, there's still a possibility. It's an aspiration of mine and uh, a, a high possibility, depending on on these conversations that I'll have here in the next couple of months, that I might run for uh, a, a local position here in the city of Mission. Uh, that's my intent. Uh, también quiero ver si algo si algo sucede mucho con, con mi música vamos a decir I'm, I'm very passionate about my music trust me so if something happens with my music I'm going to focus uh, I need to focus on it 100% pero mi, mis intenciones rock si Dios quiere y todo va como yo oh, espero que vaya a suceder uh-huh. is to run for a local a city position si Dios quiere and I want to bring change to my community bro in a more positive way es todo carajo mi güerita, mi güerita. ¿Qué estás Dios, cantando ahí, Yuken? De, 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 la que te corre de la casa en el video. Hijo de <risa> o corre tus camaradas. No, los corrió, los asustó. Bro, Nomás lo miraron y los asustó. Todos. That video you did was fantastic, bro. I, it hit home. <risa> de ojos verdes, cachetitos colorado. It's a it's good song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Todo se te queda bien. Y la güerita nunca deja de escuchar, la escucha todos los días de la zona. <risa> Tan loop. Tan loop. <laughs> the, the one that where that video, uh, Prefiero Vivir Sin Ti. Prefe- vivir Solo. Oh, Prefiero Vivir Solo. Where, yeah, that's yeah. where she scares off the. the, the yeah, well, the friends. beginning of the video when you walk into the house with roses, right? Trying yeah. to make up with her or something. Yeah. And she's like, Get the hell out yeah, of here. Get the, and then you're like, Get the hell out of here. You saw that, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, dude, I've lived that. I mean, it's not, you know. I don't need to see that. Hey, cabrones, don't yeah. let's go to the bar. Yeah. You know? And then you're at the bar singing and you're jamming, and then you all end up at your house partying. Hey. Ahí está la vironga, ahí están las botellas y todos están ahí echando mentiras y la chingada. Y tú sabes, intentan unos cuantos pistos y la chingada. Y de ahí llega la baby doll. La, ¿tú? Llega la party pooper, bro. Yeah, se abre el garaje y se ve el garaje. Y, yes. y donde se está bajando, echando pedos y la chingada. Todos están corriendo. Ahí te guacho, mi domingo. Yeah. Y yo todo enojado. Like, what? No. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to check out that video. It's called Prefiero Vivir Solo. Yes. With Domingo Tresero. And uh, the songs, uh, Rock Para Decirle La Gente, because they're all on the uh, your favorite mu- uh, music uh, platform, streaming uh, platforms, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, all of them. Just whichever is your favorite one, the one you go to, you can go get my all my yeah. songs here. Domingo Elias Tercero, 3-Z-E-R-O. Oye, tienes una rola nueva con, uh, de veteranos, ¿verdad? That's coming out on Veterans Day. Yeah, on Veterans Day. Tell me a little bit about that. That's not even on, online to be able to hear yet. Todavía, right? todavía no. I saw the video, ladies and gentlemen, and let me just tell you, it's very powerful. And uh, there's parts of the Rio Grande Valley that are on the video 
that I, I hadn't even known. I mean, that, that cemetery in yeah. Mission. I didn't uh, even know about that. State, uh, t state of Texas uh, Veteran Cemetery there on South Inspiration. It's It'll, beautiful, bro. It's nice. Yeah, it's it's it, really it, awesome it, for them, bro. It's a, it's just like uh, any veteran that, uh, cemetery you see across the country. Right? It's like, like a mini Arlington Cemetery. Uh, yes, uh, correct. Um, and uh, it's very, you know, uniformed. Uniformity, standard, you know, the spacing, everything mm -hmm. for the tombstones. Are all, it's it's very well done. And, and the honor, it shows honor and uh, respect. So The whole story of the song, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, is very powerful. And uh, tell us a little bit about what uh, the song is about. See, you said your dad wrote it, my right? Dad, my, dad wrote, my dad wrote the song, Cuando Estaba Vivo, Nunca Se Grabó. Uh, pero ya dejó un CD. My dad left a lot of CDs uh, that, that I'm um, owner of now, his music. But he had the the base of the of the sound, Dennis, mm -hmm. the instrument, como sería. So we sí. kind of kept the the base of it, but we made it more now. Hay more más estilo de Domingo Lías Tercero, pero uh, the story es un corrido por decir una historia de. It talks about a of a young man. He joins the military, and eventually gets deployed to Iraq. And uh, on one of the missions he went on, there was an explosion. This young man loses both his legs and uh, one arm. And then here you got to use your imagination a little bit. They, they, they met a vacuum and they start doing emergency surgery or whatever. You just got to imagine that right now as you hear the song. As he's uh, getting stronger and stronger, he, he's able to send a letter home or an email, whatever nowadays you want to, with one arm, telling his parents, hey, yeah, I'm coming home. I served my country proudly. I'm, I'm home. That's what he's writing down and sends to the, to the parents. But I'm bringing a friend without legs, one of his buddies, so he doesn't tell him it's him. And then post también la canción sigue y dice, the parents reply back and tell the son, mijo, we're waiting for you like we're super happy, ecstatic with open arms waiting for you. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, we can't wait to get home, but do not bring a burden around the house. Um, no, no traigas uh, lisiados, disabled, wounded people around the house. Uh, it's better if you drop off your friends somewhere where they can attend to him. And uh, in the song, once he hears this, uh, the young man ends up taking his life. Um, and he puts a seed, termina la canción, right? It's, it's, it, the reason it's, it's uh, very impactful and powerful to me because it's a reality that a lot of veterans that, that do that unthinkable act uh, go through, partner. Uh, I, I mean, I was in that position myself, uh, really close to doing that taking i didn't want to be here had survival guilt for some of the things that i've experienced as a contractor after the military but oh, back to the song you know um there's veterans out there that that live in chronic pain every day i live it's it's unbearable and then when the va isn't as helpful depending on where you are there's no medication pues ya no quieres tener ese pinche dolor y I, there's cases where they take their life because they can't take the pain every day uh there's scenarios where Maybe the wife divorces him because of his PTSD and they can't handle the... I'm, I'm just happy. I mean, let's be real. Uh, my wife here, mi güerita, her and I went through a lot of ups and downs, Rock, no no joke. Um, we actually separated twice. Um, and now we're finally in a in a better place. But during my time when I was coming back as a contractor and seeing the stuff, with, you know, yeah, uh, this was the military, uh, I was angry. I didn't care about anything. I felt... Depression, I was drinking three days straight, two days straight, bro. Dormía un día o dos, two days straight, three days straight. Yeah. Y a lot of self-pity, uh, depression, uh, survival's guilt. I, I, yes, How did you get out of that, bro? Uh, keeping work. Uh, during the time, I just wanted to continue working. Porque when you're working and you're busy, you keep your mind busy. So you don't allow it to settle and let nothing creep in. Downtime. You don't want no... nothing to creep in because then you start being... Uh, as. I don't like using the word kid. We have demons, but that's when the demons start talking to you and, and start messing with you. And um, so I, I try to stay as busy as possible. I go for my walks. I post always my vest when I go three mile walks. That that keeps my mind busy and I think, and a lot of times I pray as I'm walking or I think about what am I need to do or, or la musica. And then, you know, I started going to accordion class, uh, you know, with Mr. Loy Garza there at Crescendo Institute. If I can give a shout out to Mr. Loy Garza. And when I went to Aloy, I mentioned this before to to other individuals where when I went to him, I told him my whole situation and he said, all right, uh, I don't have too many adults, but I'll take you as a student, but you better come sober and don't be drunk. And so that was also an extra 
reason for me to, if i knew i had a class on monday i wouldn't drink desert friday because before i would start friday and i won't stop till sunday night monday morning and i was really like serious about learning how to play the accordion y no profesionalmente no más para mí so he helped me a lot with that and then finally i was talking to him and i said i want to go to the studio i have all these songs mias and so the these three songs that you hear he did all the musical arrangement with my help we, we both brainstormed so he plays Mr. Eloy Garza again, these three songs, Nada es igual, yo prefiero vivir solo, mi güerita. Uh, Eloy Garza played every single instrument there, so I took him to the studio. And uh, I think he did very well. Uh, and um, it, it brings out my style, you know. Oye, Pero, ¿y tu jefito era músico también? Or did he ever do anything professionally with music? Or? Um, uh, mi papá escribió... Can I... Curse a little bit or not. Yeah, dale, dale. Un chingazo de canciones. Okay. Uh, norteño. So era compositor. Tejano. Compositor. That was his metal, his gift. Uh -huh. um, Did he have any uh, well-known bands record any of his songs? No. It uh, was just under the radar so a lot or what? My, my dad uh, would go a lot to Joey Studio. Joey, okay. Joey Records, I think, I in San Antonio. San Antonio, yeah. I know Joey. He, he sold a lot of his songs to them. To them. So they're now the owners of those particular songs. The ones I have, that and. Um, so when I wanted to do the music, all, I, try, I had to reach out, and they're not there no more, per se. I had to find a contact. Uh, in other words, I was doing research and background because I didn't want to start singing and registering and, and doing the copywriting for songs that maybe he had, had sold to somebody. I wanted to do things right. Mm -hmm. And then they got back to me, and they sent me a big list of songs that my dad had sold to them. And I just kept, okay, no, no, all the songs that I want to do, it's not here. Who sent you the list? Was it Joey? No, Joey talked to me. I, I spoke with Joey. Un señor grande. Well, I know his son, too. No, I spoke with el señor grande. Okay. And he, he explained to me about my dad. Si tu papá vino, mijo, teníamos el record uh, location y teníamos el publishing uh, right next door. So you might want to talk to the publishing right next door. Yeah. Uh, and, and he said, because yeah, no tenemos mucho, verdad, Joey Records, you know, uh, you, it's, yeah, it's been gone for yeah, a long he time. he told me, but I didn't know that. And he In said, the 90s, they me, had a lot pero, of artists. Pero me dio el nombre de la señora Dina, una Dina, okay. Garza from publishing. Mm -hmm. And that's who I was they in contact with. And she gave me the list. Hey, these are the songs. Que they got the records. Que yeah. um, here are the titles. Um, and I, and luckily she sent me a list and I just went with the list of the songs that I had. And, and as long as they weren't on that list. These were mine, and I registered all of them. And I, I, they're all on the Library of Congress for Music and registered and copyrighted all of them. Yeah, Joey Records uh, really hit the big time when they had uh, Michael Salgado. I think they recorded uh, Una Cruz de Madera and all those songs. So I think it was Joey Records, if I'm not mistaken. So, 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 Manny. But. Yeah, I don't know much about when like a composer sells their songs. Ya no son de él, he sells them. The publisher, do, man. Do, publisher. Do, they, do they change the name? Is there the new owners, or they still give credit well, to the Well, it depends composer? on the publishing. Like, okay. Puede que, maybe they've already sang somebody, one of them is that song, but I wouldn't know it because yeah. I don't know. The money is in the publishing, Okay, uh, from what I've heard. See, you know, you, um, you write a song, you publish it, and uh, and then you publish it, and you're the composer. Because uh, a lot of composers, they sold their songs, and that's as much as they got. That's and it. then if it became an amazing hit, uh, the publisher got all the, you know, all the residuals out of it. But... There are some contracts where the publisher will give a certain percentage to the... Depending on the contract. Yeah, right? but, for example, Pira Studio and Abe and all them, they learned about publishing at a very, very early part of their career in the early 90s, and that's what's kept them so... That's good. Yeah. So I, I uh, for example, my songs, I did the whole registering doing the copyright, and, and then I did uh, ASCAP. I think I went through ASCAP yeah. and published everything. And there so you my, go. My composer, publisher, and my I'm the artist, mm -hmm. so... Everything is in house for me right now. Sí. Pero. ¿Y estás tocando? ¿Tienes grupo? Do you have a band? Do you have any gigs coming up? Because I know there's not. No sale mucho de los streams, bro. You know, you probably get you know pennies on the dollar for the streams. Yeah, I, I would. The money's in in the in the bookings and the gigs and stuff like that. Yeah. Right? Have you started booking or no? No. Es que mira, como voy empezando como artista, I reach out to certain músicos y me dicen, bro, si no tienes un constant uh, calendar of 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 gigs. Va a estar muy cabrón, me dicen, porque these músicos that are very talented, they go with the next artist. Uh -huh, they yeah. Because, obviously, como todo es un negocio, and they need money for their... For, si for le dices them. a un músico, bueno, hey, tenemos 10 tocadas in the next three months. Se queda, el amor, se queda, sí, ¿verdad? I'll do them all, you know. Pero, or, sí, if pero not, si, well, I'll si do one. Si dices one. uno aquí, otro acá, pero pues, uh, para ensayar yeah. y todo, they're yeah. not going to be your priority. Yeah. Gonna, and, and that's, that's where they make their money. That, that's where I'm learning as, as I'm going, pero... Um, as I long am, as you have, like... 
a couple of guys that are always ready. You know what I mean? I, well, luckily I do now. Uh, um, you know, you saw a video. You mentioned Roger, right? I want to mm -hmm. shout out to him, Mr. Roger. Leon. Leon Peña. He's a we became, we, we became real good. I, I came to the understanding that he was with Moss for quite a while. Is that Accordion. Accordion. Yeah, Accordion. he played with Jimmy. He played, man, that guy's See, talented, man. You no, know, and he's the one that helps me a lot. Uh, I mean, Rock, can I give a shout out to Mr. Chuy Vivian, right? Jesus Chuy Vivian at uh, Aloel, Aloel <laughs> Studio. Aloel. Aloel Recording Studio. Siempre yeah. la, lo digo mal, Chuy, discúlpame, pero um, I met Chuy through one of uh, one of my clients, uh, the Congresswoman's event. Uh, he was doing the, the, the music, uh, the sound y todo. Mm -hmm. And then we just made contest. Me dice, I have a recording studio. I'm like, oh, no way, bro. And they, yeah, he, that's where it sparked the whole thing. I and we stayed head. in touch afterwards. And all my songs have been recorded at his recording studio. Yeah. So I want to give a shout out to Mr. Chuy Vian. Uh, Chuy Vian uh, that's where we recorded my bands. Sí, también, también, me, yeah. me dice, we do a lot of work. In rock, este, and, and he does a great, great work. Oh, yeah. Uh, believe it or not, business is business. Business is business rock. Pero yo soy bien loyal. Bueno, digo loyal. Yo, yo también. Yo, yo, no entiendo mu no, yo no entiendo mucho de negocio que, que me han dicho otro recording studios. I can do it over here for this amount. And I'm saving chingos de feria, Rock. Mm -hmm. Y se va a ir con madre, pero yo no puedo irme a otro lugar ahorita porque yo empecé con él. Eh, True was the one that believed in me. True might charge me, whatever. But. No, but he's very. I mean. Eh, he's, no, pero me ayuda, me ayuda mucho. Yeah. Eh, y él contesta cuando le hablo. Le digo esto y lo, lo, en veces lo pongo necio porque pues I'm, I'm excited, right? And Chuy is, is very, well, we're, ya nos hicimos muy grandes amigos. Yo y yo. Pues sí, lo corrió Candy de la casa de estudia cuando andaban poreando. He comes out <laughs> on the music video, video yeah, sí, when sí. I saw him. Oh, mira, lo está Chuy. Ah, pues es más, uh, él me hizo los three videos músicos, uh, uh, the three music videos for those songs. Uh -huh. He did them himself with a, one of my partner de él. Yeah. So I did my music videos with him. I did my recording there uh, at his studio. And we're going to continue. We have some other songs también que ya vienen. Yeah. Pero, y esta también la que estamos hablando, um, la del soldado lisiado, se llama Veterans Day. Uh, it's a different style, um, pero muy buena la canción, yo creo, y la letra y lo que dice es very powerful. And we got a little carried away, but I want to bring awareness to the suicide issue. A lot of people don't want to talk about it, pero if we don't talk about it, how are we going to do something to help? Um, again, I mentioned that I was close to being in that situation myself. Veterans... I want to talk to them if they're hearing me. Uh, if you guys are watching the show, listen to me. There's help out there. But if we, and, and I say we because I wasn't like this myself, and we push people away, and we turn down the help, it's like an addict. You have to want to help yourself and get clean first before anything else. So in other words, you're going to have to want that help to get you out of that funk, out of that depression, out of those suicidal thoughts. Don't push these resources, these uh, loved ones, your wives away, because then they eventually they get. Uh, it, it's sad to say it, they can only take so long, and they'll get tired. They'll 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 have enough, and they don't know what else to do for you. ¿Me entiendes? Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, then you're gonna feel like there's nobody there for you. No way. It's que you push them away to to the point that they don't know what else to do. Guys, fucking clear your mind. Um, taking your lives is not. You can be depressed one, two, three days, and then the next day you're going to be happy. Imagine if you would have taken your life on that third day, and then you missed out that beautiful, happy day the fourth day. You mm -hmm. Also know this. You might have a bad situation, but I guarantee you there's always somebody that has it worse. Somebody always has it worse than, than whatever you might be going through. And they're, and they're, they're marching through it. They're you marching know? through it. Um, I want... This 22 a day, by the end of this day, 22 veterans have killed themselves. That's the statistic. Every day, 22 veterans kill themselves. Every day. I think the number is a little higher todavía, yo pienso. And, and that fucks with me, bro. It, it upsets me because mm -hmm. I've lost, I post every now and then, um, military, and then you worked as a private military contractor with, we're all veterans. So it's a smaller group todavía, and we stay together. We stay in touch, and we do reunions every year. Out of that smaller group, we've already lost a shitload of suicide. I had my team leader in Iraq that was stout, big. That dude went through, he was a uh, former Special Forces. He went through so much. Hardcore shit. That dude, I thought he was indestructible. I would have gone through hell and back with that dude. Like I thought that if I was with him on any mission, I'm going to come back alive. Mm -hmm. And then, no más para que suicide got him over here. Yeah. 
uh, he was going through whatever situation at home, PTSD, and then family marital stuff fell, fell apart, and then he takes his life. And then, like, bro, that guy was invincible in my eyes. He was my team leader. It's crazy. Um, I remember we got off in the middle of an inter uh, intersection in, in Baghdad. On the había chingos, siempre pasaba algo ahí. He didn't even say nothing, but there había, una, había un, unos big blocks in the middle, and we were trying to cross over in our vehicle. We we're trying to cross over in our vehicle, and so uh, my team leader, I'm not going to say his name, he just opens the door without even saying nothing, and he gets off and ching going, and he's moving stuff, and I'm like, bro, I see him get off, and I get off. We're in the middle of this intersection, tall rise, uh, high rises, y todo. they could have easily sniped us or whatever, and I'm there. I mean, este vato, como le valía madre, and I'm there back, uh, watching his back as he's moving these big rocks so we can continue our motorcade across and, and, and head back. That's the type of guy he was. He felt... He wouldn't care, bro. Este, and so brave as shit, bro. No, bro. No entiende, no sabes, rock. Porque yo, yo, yo he pasado por cosas horribles, homie. Ah, uh, horrible. And I got pictures here that I'll show you later of of graphic stuff of when we got ambushed. Um. Anyways, the fact that this uh, strong man that was to me was almost Superman as far as stature and brave y todo. He he fell to to his demons, right? And um. It, I think it needs to stop. I, I, I don't think it needs to stop or we need to do something to to bring those numbers down because I don't think we're ever going to because, again, we don't know what a person is going through. He could get in. But what does a VA do or what can they do? Uh, the, the, do, you, do you have, is it hard dealing with the Veterans Administration to get your, your the stuff you need for the help you need, you know? No, look, I, for a fact, our VA here in McAllen is probably one of the better ones when it comes to helping veterans mm -hmm. it's not to say they don't have their their nothing's perfect right they're they're, they're bad apples within their nurses or whatever that that kind of make it hard with some veterans que vienen medios es que en veces los, los veteranos were a special kind too bro llegamos medio aggressive uh y que ptsd and chronic pain we, we don't know how to like hey we want help now mm -hmm. and we need to work on that including myself bro so you see yeah but as far as the resources for veterans that are going through these mental issues, they have them there, and, and they always send you texts. There, there's uh, apps, there's websites, there's a uh, 24-7 uh, hotline, uh, and we need to utilize them. And then you go to church, man. I go to church, you know. I wasn't real close to God because I felt that, that I, I, I I did not deserve to to step into the church because of all the I, shit you've done. Yeah, and, and uh, was the drinking, the sinning here. But that's just you just that's you talking to yourself to justify not being there you know sometimes we sometimes we just stay in the in in the dark uh, so we can be able to do the things that we like to do which is you know to justify like yeah this. to justify I mean, our right, actions right, right. or drinking or Look, you know i came, I came uh, to an understanding that god wants the broken ones he wants everybody but the broken ones in other words Yo no iba a la iglesia because they don't want to be that hypocrite that just partied over the weekend. And I would see people go to church and talk about God. Like, weren't you just hitting three lines here and and having a threesome with that one and doing blow y la madre? And you're at church talking about, I don't want to be that person. I, I don't want to be a hypocrite. But I understood after a while that my, the pastor tells me, God wants you to come in up, up like that because he wants to fix. He, he will do his work on you. But you have to come in. Don't worry about thinking that you're a hypocrite. Yes, so you need to come in. And I go to church. I, I look forward to going to church because um, it helps me. I mean, I go to church. He says, I don't want to cry. rock. quiero llorar. Do they have a, a ministry that plays, performs, and sings, or is it? Is it a, is it a Christian so, so, non-denominational, so, 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 or is it a so, Catholic so, church? What is it's it? It's a hard church in missions. Yeah, it's a. I think uh, they have a pastor or see, a priest. Uh, it's a pastor. Okay. It's very chill. We go in jeans. It's see, very see. relaxed. I love that place, but it's all my cousins. Yeah. It's church. Mm -hmm. So everybody, it's a trip. It's family that I wasn't really. Y tienen música y están band jamming y llegan ahí todos tan alegres y con de vuelta sientes el poder, brother. Yes. You feel the power, man, immediately. It's uh, it's amazing. Um, and you know, you know, creas, bro. I mean, just because you go to church doesn't mean you're always gonna work. Live that only one person was perfect. Yes, it was Jesus Christ. So I I fall short cada rato, bro. I call I fall short on, in front of you know. Me gusta um, back to the drinking. I used to drink gotcha bad. You know your story. Mm -hmm. 
it mirrors mine. I just don't want to use because I don't want my mom to know it because yeah. that's why that's I, I, I think wanna, that's why we clicked right away, bro. It, it, it mirrors we, mine as far as your everything you think you've done. Oh, but es es que mi mamá sí se va a decepcionar mucho por ella no sabe todo lo que ha hecho. Yeah, no, yeah, no, and she doesn't need to. You eh, know what I mean? It's just we things pero, that we've done. Este, ¿qué te voy a decir? Um, pero otra cosa, Rock, I don't want to like you're clean. You stop drinking and all the other stuff. I am never going to say that I want to stop drinking. I just... You still I, drink? I still drink. But I do it until I would... My drinking was when I was depressed, survival's guilt, felt like shit, didn't want to be here, and I would drink heavy. I don't do that. And never drink alone. That was... I was always drinking alone. Now I only drink happy times with family celebration. Surrounding with... Like, it's a positive but, but, environment. But why? I mean, if you if you don't have to, you know? No, es que no, no sé, Rock. La, la neta, sí sé. Don't try to pull this on me here right now. I mean, you know. No, I mean, partner. I, let's I, let's I, be look, honest here, bro. No, you know? it's not something. No, Esquita. My mom's going to watch this on Monday. And, and my mom's heard me talk in other podcasts. Y, and she would love. She always said, Como quisiera que dijeras que no quieres tomar. Le ma, pero yo no voy a echar mentiras. Por eso les digo a la gente, yo no voy a echar mentiras. Why do you drink? I, I love. Not love. That's a strong word. I enjoy feeling how I feel when cuando oigo la música norteña. Mm -hmm. y con la cervecita o el licor rock but you can do it without it too bro no siento el spark adentro it's y yo sé que no, no sí it, pero it, no siento es que está cabrón how do you know if you haven't tried it you know it's true this is very true rock i mean that's the thing about it you know when when i quit drinking and 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 uh and, and doing drugs and stuff um i didn't know how to live without it i didn't know how to turn on the pit without alcohol and exactly. cocaine. I didn't know how to take my kids to the beach without a nice chest full of booze and cocaine. I didn't know how to take my kids to the zoo without having some cocaine in my pocket and maybe a little big gulp with whiskey in it. I mean, I didn't know how to do anything without alcohol. Yeah. And learning how to do things without it is a It, it takes time and it takes a day at a time, but you eventually get farther and farther from it and you start enjoying the things you uh, love to enjoy that you thought you only enjoyed because you were under the, you know, under the, the, the influence, influence of alcohol. And that's just a bullshit deal, bro. We, we brainwash ourselves in that matter. You know, I, uh, I mean, the best thing to do and being brutally honest is, you know what? Ya me la dejaste, I'm gonna listen. Ya me la dejaste caer, rock, chingada, <laughs> you know, I didn't, it, I didn't come for a, a, a intervention, rock. <laughs> no, dude, because this can maybe connect with a lot of people that think that they need that to enjoy something. They don't. Mira, um, I, you might say, well, that sounds like me. Maybe you were like this, but oh, I drink now once a month instead of every two, three days. But when I drink that month, it's from three, four, five days. No, two days. Two days. See, Kenny, Kenny's probably hearing me. No, 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 two days. Two days. No, neta, porque la exageras, güey. Pero mira, si tienes razón, son dos días. So, so all you have to worry about is two days. Two days a month, yeah. Because, but I, you look, all I know is that if I don't have those two days a month, something happens in me, and I'm just being like. No sé, güey. And, and it's not me trying to find a reason to do it. Because I know, I know, Rock. If I well, could, you're working real hard and giving me some sort of justification. No, I'm not for trying it. to, partner. If I wanted <laughs> Something to. Something happens in me. Get no, mira. If you ever were, look, and again, and it's been shown, if you ever been to a situation like I was in, a, in Iraq and Afghanistan, That, that that close cause of always not knowing if there was an explosion or getting killed. Or sh it causes something in your brain. I forget what it is because I, I go through the, when the psychologist was telling me. And, and what we want to do is we want to feel, we want to substitute those that feeling and those chemical reactions with something else. And and that once a month of extreme, everything I do is extreme, por decir, it kind of acts like like that feeling that I was yeah. when I was over there. I think the reason that that happens is because you've been doing it for so long like that. I you 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 know, you know if, if, if the day you stop doing it it's going to take some adjustment but it can be it can be possible to where alcohol is completely out of your life completely you're abstinent uh, and uh, you enjoy life for life itself and then you tackle whatever situations come into your mind or at you you know sober and with clear mind and you so, know I, and i love that because I, i get to wake up like at eight in the morning when before like no, <laughs> yeah and, 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 and these three 
the, now that, you know, I, I said I haven't drank for like a month. It's once a month. So the first couple of weeks after I'm recovering, okay, todavía estoy medio, okay, get up at 10 or 11, and then ya yeah, towards the third week, ya me levanto como las ocho de la mañana mm -hmm. todos los días. Pero ya llegaron los días, los two days para party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, a, it's a cycle. Yeah, it it's is. It's a fucking it, cycle. It is. Does it the, does the alcohol ever take you to harder drugs or anything like that? Um, Because that's what it would do for me, bro. I mean, I would never know when that moment would come where I'm at the point where, you know what? You know what I mean? Not, and then I'd go <laughs> and then it'd be never ending. I'd be Thursday night. Friday all day, Friday night, Saturday all day, Saturday night, Sunday all day, Sunday night, I'd run out of shit, and I'm starting to feel like shit, like I ain't worth the fuck. And then Monday morning, I've got a little bit left, and I'm seeing the school buses passing by. So I'm like, what am I doing with my life? I'm like, it was crazy. When I think back no, to it, but, I didn't. I don't understand where that was coming well, from. You know, como te digo, Rock, no quiero decepcionar a... So no quiero hablar de cosas, mm -hmm. ¿me entiendes? Pero yeah. tercer, alcohol is always for us. It's pa, pa, always para, the, the pa, beginning. Para el dos, el tercer día, como dices tú, uh, like you were mentioning, I would look in the mirror and I'm like, I literally just wasted three days, mm -hmm. 24, 24, 24 hours. You know what you could have done in three days? And I'm never going to do this again. And then <sighs> comes uh, yes, two weeks correct. later, no, sí. I'm at it again. Sí, sí. But you know what? This time... It's not going to get as bad as it got yeah, last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, rock, rock, rock. Shut, shut the fuck up already, bro. <laughs> bro, I'm just like you, dude. We're all the same. Everybody I talk to that goes through this bullshit, they all got the same fucking story, bro. It's crazy, but all I can, all I can tell you is there's hope and there's faith, and all you need is the courage. Yeah, I, I agree, man. And uh, I'm trying, bro. I'm trying. Um lo que no quiero hacer yo es que, oh, yeah, I'm going to go and, and abstain from this. And then I know I'm in a month, in three months, I might No, you don't fall. know. And then, you said, and I then, know. No, you don't know. Que, no, pero no sé. And then if I fall in three months, like, otra vez. If. Voy a empezar. Pues es que, the day you feel like falling is the time you got to call somebody like me. You never answer, A lot of Rock. people, hey. This is Rock. Leave a message. <laughs> <laughs> Or somebody, you go, you meet people that are in the same, that are that are in the same boat, and you have a, 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 a you know, I have some phone cut numbers still whenever I need it, if I need it, but the, the, a lot of people don't understand the moment you're supposed to kill The idea of drinking is when you start thinking about drinking. That's when you got to call somebody or say, you know what? I feel like drinking. Sabes que llévame para el taco palenca. Vamos a comer algo. So, okay. Yeah. Que te quite you, brought, you, brought, you brought food. Into, no. free, free shout out to taco palenca there. No, right, but right. you brought the food. Deal. I was barely going to mention that. So, hay noches, por ejemplo, cuando quería ir, eh, quiero porear y quiero salir. Uh, ya son las ocho. Ya son las nueve. Sabes que eh, no voy a ir. Mejor voy a comer algo. So it's weird you brought, it's weird you brought out food because once I eat it, my stomach's already like ah oh, I don't feel like doing nothing I'm just gonna lay down uh, yeah so it's so weird that that's the yeah the out like how, how old are you man I'm 46 yeah you still got a long ways to go uh, in life partner. bro we got um, a lot of things to do man yeah um, you know you wanna be able to live through your 50s. I've seen a lot of my friends that never stopped. Oh, I didn't think it was going And they didn't make it out of their 50s, bro. Their I, livers gave out and shit. I, that was a, a very big concern of mine. And then you don't want to be sick and having somebody to have to take care of yo you, no bro. Yo no tomaba beers, bro. Yo me tomaba three bottles of whiskey. Así estaba yo. Whisk, puro whiskey derecho. Jack Daniels? Yay, babe. Southern Comfort? Es igual, ¿verdad? Bro, I've been through it all, bro. Puro whiskey, partner. Not a beer. I don't like beer. Yeah. But a whiskey. But I'm here to show you and be the perfect uh, witness to yeah. that it, it can be done, you know, but you have to make some steps. And So so the way you're being for me uh, when it comes to the alcohol and everything else, that's the way I want to be for veterans when it comes to the mental situation because I want them to see me as an example that I've made it past that rough suicidal phase because it was rough. And it's a battle every day. You're never just not. It's never, but it, it's it's been less. It's diminished a lot. So the way you you can be an example for me, the way you've been clean and so forth. I want them to see me as a veteran like them, mm -hmm. that they can push through when tough when, yeah. when times are tough. You know what freaks me out, bro? And, uh, you know is uh, 
you know, a lot of military men and women, I would imagine. Yes, uh, yes, both. They they leave the military with a drinking problem. It is correct. And then they come to their neighborhoods and their hometowns, and there's a bar for them, bro. I, I don't understand so, that. So, Why so, is there, like, the American legions and, and all the that? VFWs, you're, you're, all the veterans that have alcohol problems, we're, we're, let's go to the, the, the legions. So, you know, there's drinks at half price, you know. So I don't know if that benefits the, the the veterans or not, bro. But I I highly doubt it. So look, the camaraderie, camaraderie and being around veterans, it's it's it helps, but it's always got to be drinking, right? And 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 you pointed something out that I've I've been very aware of for a while now that I wouldn't recommend anybody that's going through rough PTSD and has constant suicidal thoughts to go drink with camaradas. Now it just happens that that's our first to go. Hey man, just let's go talk, let's hang out. Let's have some drinks and we'll talk it out. But that's only going to elevate the situation. It's going to escalate, yeah. And then escalate yeah. the situation. Yeah, right. and then and, but that that always that always tripped me out, you know, because when I was young and I was drinking, yo le ponía pa American Legion, carnal, you know, ahí están los viejones y me siento a hablar con ellos y están los pistos a two dollars, ¿entiendes? <laughs> Tan low price. I mean, it was cheap to drink there. I wasn't a veteran. I'm just there yeah, hanging yeah, out yeah, because yeah, yeah. iba con otros camaradas y ahí nos juntamos y pagamos ahí todos comprando drinks toda la tarde, carnal. And now, now that I look back at it, I'm like, with so much alcoholism in the veteran community, why is it? Why is there a bar right, that right. specializes for the veterans that? You know, has available especially, alcohol for yeah, especially when we know a majority of them have these issues, right? Mm -hmm. That the, the mental isn't that crazy, man. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, I mean, I don't know what the veterans think about it, but uh, if you so, really look, I at mean, it, I know VFWs do a lot for for veterans, the community, and, and stuff positive, like that, and, yeah. and they always have the honor guard when a veteran passes away. But I mean, let's be real, like. When you're in the military, uh, alcohol goes with one and the other. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like culture, right? Um, ¿Qué te voy a decir? Um, so, te voy a decir, uh, como me, me, PTSD, how it, it grabbed me, right? I was going to tell you one of the uh, situations I went through. When I was in, uh, in Iraq with with uh, the one of the bigger private military companies after I got out of the military, right? I went to Iraq um, with uh, Blackwater, very well-known company in that time. We did over 150,000 missions or more. I mean, in total with all the teams there, uh, with our clients, we worked for the U.S. government. So the ambassador, USAID, uh, a lot of diplomats, the U.S. government, that was our clients. Uh, so we would escort them in tight, horrible uh, situations. And we never lost a client. We were probably one of the only companies that never lost a client or a principal, what we call, meaning we would get shot, ambushed, explosions, and we never lost a client. We lost a, quite a few contractors like me. So in this particular mission, September 19th, 2005, aquí tengo la... Nunca me la quito. We left our base. Normally, it's it's a, it's a one team, the PSD team, PSD, Personal Security Detail Team, se va. In this particular mission instance, they sent one team first. It's called the advanced team to go secure the venue where the second team was going to bring the client. So our job was to arrive first, run the dog, the canine, make sure everything's secure. If people that weren't supposed to be there, we kick, kick them out, get, get out, right? We, we needed it secure. So this particular morning, we're, in, we're, we're the first team, the advanced team, which I was a part of. I'm in the lead suburban, but I'm the left rear shooter. So I'm sitting in the back on the left side. And we scan our sector as, as the Suburban's going 90 miles an hour. So we, we got to observe everything, bros. And that gives tingles of headaches because you're processing everything and then calling it on the radio if you see anything fishy to, to everybody. And so we're hauling ass down this road in Mosul, Iraq. It's around 9.05, 9.10 in the morning. And it's, it's one Suburban, two Suburban, three Suburban, a Toyota Land Cruiser. And then we have a Humvee in the back. I'm in the lead Suburban. And the low at the rock. We're all going down this road. Yeah, un carro, and I remember it's a gray sedan car, and it happens to be in the same road we're on, but it's driving super slow. So what these guys were doing back then were slowing everybody down and go pa 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 pa. Nos chingaban. So this car was super slow, and then finally each vehicle, the nosotros has a vehicle commander, right? The vehicle commander tells the driver, "We need to speed up 
and kind of like ride, push this motherfucker off the road, and then keep hauling ass. He's slowing us all down. We all know what's probably going to happen. So in our vehicle, we speed up and we touch the car and we move them the fuck out of the road. So then we speed forward. Second suburban is going through, and then ya que estamos nosotros allá, verdad? The vehicle commander looks in the rearview mirror and he says, "Look at this motherfucker! He's coming back in our motorcade." When he said that, I'm, I'm on the left side looking this way. I then look all the way over my left shoulder, all the way to the back, and as soon as I look, boom! Fucking big fireball explosion. We feel the pressure all the way to the, our vehicle. That suburban, the nos camarada de nosotros, was nowhere to be seen. It was horrible. Went up the air. We later found out that it went up the air, and it's an armored suburban, so it's super heavy. This car had so many explosives, 900 pounds of explosives. We figured, we found that out after they did the after action report and the walkthrough. But explotó el carro, immediately killed all my buddies in that, in that suburban after we touched that car. Instantly. So that suburban landed. It was a two lane. Venía un carro de allá para acá. Had nothing to do with the situation, you know, like regular traffic. Another Iraqi, the suburban landed on top of that car, killed the driver instantly. Que no tenía nada que ver. Of, um, our guys already dead at, at that time, and then it bounces and lands further that way. But the chingo de smoke, we still didn't know where the suburban was. We had not known that it had already flown all the way over there to after the fact. Then, so the two suburbans that, that made it through, we all stopped over there, and the other vehicle stopped over here. They had, still hadn't hit the the X. <laughs> As soon as we stop, we all pause. We didn't know what the fuck to do. And then we look. Suddenly we start getting shh, pa, 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 pa. On this side, you see this white, almost 250 yards, 300 yards. We on a mass, chingona, and they nos estaban disparando, pa, pa. So we, on ass, we get off our vehicle. We start engaging, pa, 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 pa. Uh, During those days, the U.S. military mandaba helicopters to do routine patrols, pero por arriba para ver si habían chingaderas abajo. And normally the military never helped contractors because they were on, they worked Department of Defense. They were very iffy with policy, so they never helped us out. This particular situation, I don't know why, but they saw the plume of smoke. They flew over us, and while we're engaging that mosque, I, it looked like a fucking movie, bro. That helicopter literally flew right over me in our vehicle. He dropped like four uh, hell rockets into the mosque. We killed 19 of the bad guys. They killed three of our guys and one regional security officer that worked for the Department of State. Um, that led to me going through all that ordeal of survival's guilt, wanting to kill myself, wanting not to be here, depressed. Uh, you know, I wanted to go back. I, I continue to go back for years uh, for with different companies, and I experienced other chingaderas pior. Um, rockets falling all over me, bro. Uh, but oh, back to this particular incident, this is the first real traumatic situation that gets in and, Yeah. And the fact that we touched the car that had the explosives, I shouldn't be talking to you. I, 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 I to this day, I still question God, what, well, why did you let us live and not them? That was the, the guilt that was hitting me a lot, the most. Mm -hmm. Eso me dolió chingos, porque, pues, Yo miraba cómo estaba tomando y cómo estaba viviendo mi vida y yo me quedaba pensando, pues, si any of those guys that might have survived would have been living a better life than I'm doing right now, you know what I mean? Like, why? That's what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, uh, maybe you're going through everything you went through so you can help other veterans, you know? Yeah. Because yeah. uh, uh, I think eventually, I think eventually you'll end up uh, giving up the liquor and shit, bro. I, I, I think so, too, Rock. Uh, and uh, then you're going to be able to extend your experience and uh your wisdom to other veterans that are coming out because there's there's youngsters coming in every day you know from different parts of the world that are in active combat duty and uh they need they need somebody that knows and that's been there to be able yeah. to support them and in, inspire them to you know live a full life the way they should with family and friends and stuff like that man so I, to me, uh, God, I'm, there's a reason for everything, you know. God has a reason for everything. And, you know, everything you've gone through might be, it's like, uh, that's the way I feel about what I went through with my addiction and all that. Uh, and I finally was able to kick it and be able to help others. 
And I said, okay. I remember one time it's like a, I... It's like a testimony for others. Dude, right? I went one time, I went to go talk to a school, a middle school in, uh, in Alton. And um, it was in the morning and I went and I gave them a comedy show with uh, a, a, a message of work ethic. And I spoke a little bit about my drug addiction mm -hmm. and, you know, stay away from the drugs. And, and during my stories, I saw the kids and the teachers laughing and crying. crying. Wow. And so then they came down after I finished, I did like 45 minutes and it was a it's motivational speaking that I do. And the kids were hugging me and they were so excited and happy with what I had just done for them. And then I walked, I said my goodbyes, and I walked out. And as soon as I walked out of the school, I broke down and I started crying, dude. And I looked up and I said, is that why you put me through all this bullshit? bullshit. So I could do that? Is that why? Yeah. And I said, if that's the reason, I accept it today. And, uh, it's, it's, and then, par it's powerful. Bro, let can, me tell what, you. What you can do. And, a and, week later, I was in Harlingen. And I was doing a remote for Charlie Clark Nissan. Shout out to Charlie Clark Nissan, giving him a little spot there. <laughs> and um, some man and a woman walk over, I mean, show up, and they come to me. Hey, Rock, what's up, man? Hey, ¿qué pasó, carnal? Vengo desde Misión, carnal. Hey, really? What the hell are you doing over here in Harlingen? He goes, I came all the way when I heard you on the radio. I came all the way over here to tell you that you had an amazing impact on my chavalo, bro. That ass, bro. I said, where, where what? You went and talked to them in, in, uh, in Alton at a middle school, and he's been emulating you ever since. And I want to thank you for giving them the positive vibe. I was like, my stomach just yes. went like, wow, dude. You reach one kid, you reach a whole bunch of other kids, because then that kid goes and emulates you, and then See? the other kids get inspired by him. So it just keeps going. So I realized in that moment that that was the reason I had gone through my horrific cocaine addiction and crack addiction was to be able to survive it and to and get out of it help and others. help other people and inspire other people to live positively. You know what I mean? So that's why. And, and the, the best way to do it is to be brutally fucking honest. No, no I, bullshit. I, 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 you know what I, I mean? Agree, I agree about, about the uh, honesty because I always try to be very frank, straight to the point. Yeah. As to, uh, and, and it's honesty. A lot of people don't even they they get butt hurt when they hear honesty, bro. Yeah. And then they hate you because they don't. Yeah. They don't. Pues, uh, pues, you simply, I rather have people that tell me the truth than be surrounded by friends that, that are like the yes, yes yeah. to everything. You're badass. Yes, you're. Yeah. Cool. They're just bull BSing you. No, you don't. As the rock, la, eso el ambush. Eso te iba a decir también que varios meses después es que once that incidents like that happened they would do a blackout where you couldn't communicate back home because uh, for security reasons yeah so after three four weeks uh ya que you can call home um i called my dad and my mom hey, hey, da, da, da. and then i kind of told him hey this happened but uh I'm, I'm okay so my dad i spoke with my dad for a while and i told him everything um lo que pasó mm -hmm. uh for three months or so, you have like three meses, no, no, cada rato. <laughs> Especially over there, three months, yeah. because you know, you get homesick, you want to come home. Sí, so, me. three months later, I call again just to say, hey, check in, and then I talk to my dad. And before I hang up, I'm seeing my boys. I say, me dice, espérate, espérate, quiero que oigas esto. Boom, he had already had the little CD recorded. He wrote a corrido for me, bro, uh -huh. of the whole incident. Uh -huh. Badass corrida. So, yeah, I would, I, um, talks about how we killed the 19 guys and, and the whole pinche historia. We've been, You're going to record it? So I posted a lot during the anniversary del event. Y la escuchó Mario Marichalar. Órale. Mario. El de los bravos. El, el que era el, 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 la el primera voz de Ramón Ayala por 28 años, 20 yeah, years. all the hits. Bro, um, la escuchó Mario. And Mario reaches out to me. And we talk. And we've been in touch together for, for he's had my song now for like a year and a half. Pero me, el solo. <coughs> Excuse me. That's what made me feel badass. Because uh, of all the, the voices that I've heard, I always... Not because it's Mario and he's going to record my song. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Entonces, siempre, si y siempre para mí en lo personal, my opinion is to me he's the number one voice el norteño, el género norteño. Para, yeah, para mí. Hay muchos cantantes amazing, pero to me his particular voice you is You sound a little like you you're kind of like emulating him in your voice también, bro. I kind of get I see I hear a little like pues in the que, last Así tengo la voz. Uh -huh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's 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 good to have a little inspiration from different types of mu musical uh, you know, icons like him, but sí. uh, but on that soldier song, I like, man, uh, it's got that Ramona Ayala uh, feel, uh, you know, that Mario Chalar, bro. Este, so <clears throat> 
me dice Mario, hey, compadrito, hablamos de nada. Like, he and I, like, we, we were in touch. Kind of, like, maybe, he's always busy, pero we, we, we talk at least once every two weeks or three weeks. Me dice, quiero grabar tu canción. Pues le dije la historia y todo, y mi papá me dice, everything I'm telling you, es, está muy buena esa canción, la, la quiero grabar. Y ya me dijo, ya la tengo. And so I have a buddy of mine, Tony Martinez, that's our, that was our records, that's who Mario's with. Mm -hmm. He and I, uh, the, the owner of Dells Our Records went to high school with me, so... Me habló Tony over the weekend. Dice, oye, hey, Mingo. And I was busy rehearsing. I never heard the call. So he finally leaves me a message. You need to call me right now. Ah, so tú no contestas como yo, carnal. No, bro. bro. Hey, espérate. Está bien, cabrón. Tú no contestas, güey, pero estaba el sonido. Ah, es que you're always busy. Chingos, carnal, también. Eat your rocks. So I see the messages after we're done rehearsing because I'm, I'm, pre I'm preparing for a show to rock coming up. Este, and so I called Tony. Le digo, ¿qué quiere Tony? Eso le hablé a Tony y dice, Mingo, le digo, ¿qué pasó, Tony? O es de Mario, porque Mario es his artist. Y es su padrino, his godfather, I think. Y dice, Mario, necesita un favor. Le digo, ¿qué pasó? ¿Qué Mario? ¿Marichelar? Le digo, sí. Pues, he's going to have his brand new corrido coming out. Me está diciendo todo. And you, pues, fit the, pues, lo que haces, right? The, the DA agent, queremos. Uh -huh. Queremos tres personas. You have all the kids y todo. Le digo, I got all my tactical vests, the rifles y todo, bro. Le digo, by when, le digo, y dice, este sábado, which is this past Saturday, bro, Saturday I gotta go to Laredo, tengo una tocada. Like, you know, I was playing for the South Texas Conjunto Association, you know, three, sí. third annual awards. Uh -huh. Yeah, bro, what, uh, ¿qué horas? Because I gotta take out by 2 p.m. He says, no, uh, it's early in the morning. We got the, the private plane at the McCurry Airport. It's already ready for Saturday morning. We just need the people, the, the agents, the DA agents. Uh, y luego me dice Tony, ah, y ya me, ya me tocó la canción, Mario, ya la, la vamos a grabar, va a estar, va a estar con Mario, me dice, tu corrido, uh -huh. ya la estamos grabando y es que come out real good. Es todo. Le dije, Tony, yeah, bro, uh, le dije, man, I appreciate that, I'm excited, uh, and I'm, I'm more than honored that Mario wants to sing it, because I hold his voice and him in high regards. Yeah. Not kissing ass, I, desde chavalo siempre esa voz era la que me gustaba a mí. Yeah. Y ahora resulta que mi, mi corrido, güey, de, lo que te, de la historia. That, that, that's, uh, to me, is, means a lot, bro. Well, hell yeah, bro. And uh, the, the music you're recording, I, I get into it, bro. Esta es la música que escuchaba yo cuando andaba poreando, carajo. Y ahora la escucho sin porear, nomás así, en de qué. Se oye todo, papá. Uh, uy, uy, uy. Ah! Bro. <laughs> No, 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 don't even go there, bro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you gotta see this video. Prefiero vivir solo. Yo prefiero vivir solo. It's always a pleasure to have you here, Domingo, man. You no, got some great you. stories. Muchas gracias. Y pues, uh, I like to sit down with you porque pues, eres la neta tú, carnal. No, la onda. That is straight. Uh -huh. Tú también estás igual. <laughs> we have like uh, somehow the same personality, yo digo, and mm -hmm. we kind of, through different paths in our lives, we kind of have the same type of uh, history. Bro. Yeah. Oh, Casi yeah. tenemos el mismo DNA, carnal. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, va. Hey man, I appreciate you coming, bro. Muchas no, gracias. Muchas, muchas gracias por tenerme aquí. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, el Veterans Day sale el video. So go to his YouTube channel, Domingo Elias, Elias 13 with a 3. Z-E-R-O. Tercero. Tercero. Three zero. I said 13, right? A three is zero. It's a tercero. 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 Okay. It's tercero, bro. Just, just <laughs> go with it, Rob. Up, just bro. go with it. Instead of spelling out the tercero. As is, soon as you put Domingo Elias and a three, it'll all come it, out. It's a tercero. But hey, real quick, Rob, I, I, in case we're kind of closing down the, the show, I don't know. Uh, guys, please follow me on all my social media. I got my uh, YouTube channel, Domingo Elias Tercero, three Z-E-R-O. Tres -Z Z-E-R-O. Okay. I got my Facebook page. Uh, my artist or um, fan page, como se diga, Domingo Elias Tercero. Síganme, por favor. Follow me. I also have my uh, TikTok, Domingo Elias Tercero. Yeah. And uh, my uh, Instagram, Domingo Elias Tercero. Guys, follow me. You'll see uh, everything or anything uh -huh. that's going on with me. E the song, the Soldado Lisiado, will be coming out Veterans Day, November 11th. 
uh, on all your favorite music digital platforms. Uh, please go get it. Go. Les va a gustar la canción. Yo sé que les va les va a tocar mucho. The video is amazing, bro. Te sacaste la edad, carnal. I okay. worked really hard on it, man. I really put a lot. Uh, it's songs. like a movie, dude. Sí. It's not just you guys performing like regular videos that I always see. You know, it's got a little firefight. There's scene a story to yeah, it, yeah, man. Yes, and you so you have soldiers and show soldiers, and you even have the explosion, explosion on the show. A very good. Who did the video? Uh, the video was made by Mr. Valdemar Garcia. Uh, shout out to Valde. Uh, um, Awesome uh, video director. Se sacó la daga, uh, la daga partner. Yeah. Uh, guys, ah, Rock, chinga, man. Este, debo de empezar siempre saludando a mi familia. Dale gas. Uh, unos saludos y abrazo muy grande para mi mamá, Patricia García, mi güerita, Candelaria Candy de la Garza. Uh, that woman's put up with a lot of crap, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, it takes a special kind of woman. If she stuck through all that, man, she's a definite, she's a keeper. And uh, I, I appreciate everything that... that She's done for me. Es todo, este, carnal. Y a mis hermanos y mis hermanas y a todos que tus followers, tus seguidores que tienes un chingo de rock. Pues sí. I need, I, I want to get to where you're at. So. <laughs> no, man, uh, it to took all, me 40 to all, years, bro. To all his fans and followers, man, thank you for yeah. watching and please, I appreciate your support. Uh, follow, follow me on social media, guys. ¿Y sabes por qué nos persiguen a nosotros, Dad? Porque somos de verdad, bro. A huevo. Somos la pura pinche neta, carnal. A huevo. Asustame one time. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all have a good one. Muchas gracias. Que tengan un buen día. Hoy no más.